30,000 self-charging cars a day. That number seems almost unbelievable until you realize it's happening not in Germany, Japan, or Silicon Valley, but right in the heart of Africa. Yes, Africa is currently producing 30,000 self-charging electric vehicles every single day, a feat that has stunned the global automotive industry and thrown tech giants like Tesla into a scramble to respond. Join me as I dive into the incredible world of Africa's self-charging cars and see if I can find out how they're pulling off 30,000 of these amazing vehicles every single day. The idea of a car that powers itself without needing to stop at a charging station sounds like something pulled from the pages of a science fiction novel. Yet it's already a tangible reality in many African nations. For years, Africa was considered the final frontier in the automotive space. Often written off due to poor infrastructure, political instability, and limited access to cutting-edge manufacturing technologies. But something has shifted. What started as a trickle of experimental prototypes across innovation hubs in Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana has now become a roaring stream of industrial output. Self-charging electric vehicles, or SEVs, are not just being produced, they are being mass-produced at a scale and pace that has never been seen before. The world's attention has turned sharply toward Africa, and the question on everyone's lips is the same. How is this even possible? To understand the scope of what's happening, we need to start by defining what a self-charging car actually is. Unlike traditional electric vehicles that rely on plug-in stations or home wall chargers, self-charging cars utilize a combination of solar panels, regenerative braking, kinetic energy harvesting, and next-generation lithium-air batteries to continuously power themselves during operation. In other words, these cars can drive almost endlessly without ever needing to be plugged in. It's the dream of every EV owner. No range anxiety, no queues at charging stations, no need to pay for electricity. Now imagine 30,000 of these vehicles rolling off assembly lines every day across a continent once overlooked in the global EV race. How did Africa become the unlikely champion of the self-charging car revolution? The answer lies in both necessity and innovation. Faced with chronic fuel shortages, unreliable power grids, and a rapidly urbanizing population, African entrepreneurs and engineers had no choice but to think outside the box. While Western automakers were locked in a race to make their existing EVs faster and fancier, African startups were asking a completely different question. How do we make these cars make their own power? The result is nothing short of a technological marvel. Many of Africa's self-charging cars use lightweight composite materials developed in-house, allowing them to operate more efficiently and requiring less power to move. The solar panels integrated into the roof and hood of these vehicles are made from a unique polymer blend that is both cost-effective and highly efficient in converting sunlight into usable energy, even in partially shaded conditions. Combined with regenerative braking systems that harvest kinetic energy every time the vehicle slows down, the average African self-charging car can drive hundreds of kilometers a day without losing power. Factories in Ethiopia, Rwanda, and Nigeria are now running 24-7 to meet the exploding demand for these vehicles. Not just in local markets, but increasingly from overseas buyers in Europe, South America, and parts of Asia. These are not just small workshops assembling parts. They are vertically integrated facilities capable of producing their own batteries, drivetrains, and even software systems in-house. And perhaps most surprisingly, many of these companies are run by young African engineers and founders under the age of 35. What they lack in funding compared to giants like Tesla, they more than make up for in resourcefulness, community support, and a fierce sense of purpose. But let's not gloss over the challenges. Africa's automotive rise hasn't been easy, and the road to 30,000 cars a day is paved with incredible struggle. Many of these manufacturers operate in regions where roads are poorly maintained, internet access is unreliable, and supply chains are often disrupted by political instability or border disputes. Corruption in licensing and import duties adds layers of red tape, and many governments are only just beginning to put in place the regulatory frameworks needed to support large-scale EV deployment. Then there's the challenge of public perception. For decades, imported used cars from Japan and Europe were the norm, and convincing consumers to switch to a locally produced self-charging vehicle took not just marketing but real, on-the-ground education. Manufacturers hosted roadshows, community demonstrations, 
and even offered free trial periods for skeptical drivers. Bit by bit, the resistance crumbled. The turning point came when the vehicles began to prove their reliability in rural and urban environments alike, even under the intense heat and tough road conditions that would destroy most imported models. And that's when the real magic started to happen. Private investors from Singapore, South Africa, and even Silicon Valley began to take notice. Money flowed in, partnerships were formed, and tech talent began to return home from abroad to join what many are now calling Africa's EV renaissance. At the center of this transformation is a company called Matsi Mobility, based in Nairobi. Originally launched as a last-mile delivery solution using solar-powered motorcycles, Matsi now produces fully self-charging electric cars that are dominating the East African market. Their flagship model, the Matsi Zuri, has a 1,200 kilometers range, recharges itself via high-efficiency solar arrays, and can be built in under 18 hours from raw materials to finished product. Zuri models are already in use by public transport systems in Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania, saving operators thousands of dollars annually in fuel and maintenance. Meanwhile, in West Africa, a company named Ampersand Motors is pushing the boundaries of battery technology with its patented ultracapacitor system that charges and discharges at record speeds. Their vehicles are being tested for government fleets in Ghana, and there are rumors of a major export deal with Germany. This is no longer an isolated success story. It's a continent-wide movement with hundreds of startups, research institutions, and manufacturing alliances collaborating across borders in a way that defies old narratives of African division. And yet, even with all this momentum, one question remains. Can Africa maintain this breakneck pace? With Tesla's gigafactories struggling to scale battery production, and rising costs in U.S. labor markets slowing new EV launches, it's not outlandish to think that Africa could soon lead the world in EV output per capita. As the world races toward a zero-emissions future, the very continent once left behind may now be the one pulling everyone else forward. And while Tesla is still the global face of electric vehicles, its grip on the top is looking shakier by the day. The competition is no longer just in China or Europe, it's on the streets of Lagos, Nairobi, Kigali, and Accra. Self-charging cars built by African hands are redefining what it means to innovate sustainably. And they're doing it at a scale that no one, not even Elon Musk, saw coming. This is only the beginning. In part two, we'll explore the secret partnerships, deep tech breakthroughs, and community-led engineering schools that are fueling this electric uprising. So buckle up. Africa's ride to the top has just begun. The story of Africa's self-charging cars is more than a headline. It is a symbol of what is possible when innovation is born from necessity and guided by bold vision. It's not just about vehicles or even about beating Tesla at their own game. It's about rewriting the narrative of a continent long misunderstood and underestimated by the rest of the world. For decades, Africa has been painted as a place of scarcity, but the rise of the self-charging car industry proves that it is a land of limitless potential. Every car that rolls off an African assembly line is more than a machine. It's a statement. A statement that says we are no longer waiting for help, for permission, or for validation. Africa is driving forward, literally and metaphorically, toward a future it is building on its own terms. These cars are built in local factories by local hands using local ideas to solve local problems. And now those solutions are becoming global. And this is only the beginning. Imagine what happens when every child in Lagos sees engineers who look like them creating clean tech that powers their own streets. Imagine what it means for a family in a remote village in Zambia to hop into a zero-emission car that doesn't rely on imported fuel or unstable electricity. This is not science fiction. This is the new African reality. One built by innovation hubs, by returning diaspora talent, by university programs focused on clean energy, and by small startups that dared to believe they could compete with giants. There will still be challenges ahead. Scaling up production sustainably. Maintaining quality control as international demand explodes. Navigating patent wars, trade restrictions, and the inevitable attempts by bigger players to buy out or co-opt this progress. But the momentum is now unstoppable. Africa's EV revolution is not just a disruption. It's a declaration. A declaration that the future of mobility will not be dictated by Detroit, 
Berlin, or Shanghai alone. It will be written in the back alleys of Accra, in the solar labs of Kigali, in the workshops of Johannesburg, and in the dusty startup garages of Nairobi. To everyone watching this unfold from the outside, it's time to shift your perspective. Africa is not catching up. It's pioneering a new path, a path that is cleaner, smarter, and more self-reliant than anything we've seen before. So the next time you hear the phrase self-charging car, don't think of Silicon Valley. Think of solar panels glinting under the hot African sun. Think of innovators soldering wires under open skies. Think of communities rising on the back of their own creativity. Because the revolution is here, and it's charging forward on its own. Now it's your turn. Share your thoughts. Support the makers. Watch what comes next. Because the world's most exciting electric story? It isn't coming. It's already happening. Right here. In Africa.